He had grabbed me by the throat with his hand. Strangulation is one of the most common crimes a domestic violence victim will face. Just not being able to breathe, I started panicking. But here in Ohio. But if he would have held me just a little longer, I would have been dead. Strangulation victims do not have the same legal protections most other states do. But strangulation is really closing off the airway. The I-team looks closer at a push by some to close what they see is a strangulation law loophole. And that push continues in Columbus to come up with harsher penalties for people who strangle a domestic partner. During the course of my I-team investigation, I learned being strangled even once greatly increases a victim's chance of eventually being murdered. Tonight, the story of one survivor and why some oppose changing the law. That day, I... Jessica Roberts remembers the morning last year her now former husband nearly killed her. The pressure on my neck, it was just so quick and he had such a grip. I was out within three seconds. What she experienced is what domestic violence victims advocates are passionate about, making sure the public uses the right word, strangulation. When we talk to survivors, we do say the word choke because that's what people are familiar with, but strangulation is really closing off the airway. Jane Kiefer is the executive director of Dayton's Artemis Center. She and others who help domestic violence victims have become increasingly alarmed at the incidence of strangulation with compelling reasons. We know it's if someone's strangled in an intimate partner relationship, they are seven times more likely to be a victim of a homicide. Robert's ex-husband had strangled her once before in 2007. He had grabbed me by the throat with his hand. Just not being able to breathe, I started panicking. Once he let go, she was left with redness and a bruise she could feel. I had a pain up under here, though, for probably a week. Strangulation signs do not always show up right away. Bruising usually comes days later. Victims can have bloody red eyeballs, a drooping face or eyelid, changes to their voice and ability to swallow. Strangulation can also cause serious internal injuries. And then there's the psychological damage. I think that the abuser is sending a very strong message that um, I control your life. That's exactly what Robert's husband did for the next 11 years. It may not have been physical, but like I wasn't able to go places financially. He didn't want me working. And I knew what it was, I knew it was abuse. The next time Raymond Roberts strangled his wife was September 20th, 2018. She had moved out, but came back to their Springfield home to get some things out of the garage, believing he would not be there. So when I walked in, the door swung open this way, and I went this way, and then the garage door slammed behind me, and he was there. She tried to run, but he caught her. He had grabbed me from behind, and he had choked me like this. She passed out quickly, and when she came to, was bleeding from where he'd slashed her throat with a knife. Robert somehow was able to drive to a gas station a mile away for help. This surveillance video shows her ex-husband chasing her. That's his white car on the right. Her story, just one example of why advocates support Senate Bill 146. It would enhance how someone convicted of strangulation is treated under Ohio's domestic violence law. Right now, only Ohio and South Carolina do not have felony strangulation statutes. Under current Ohio law, a person convicted of strangling a spouse or family member could be charged with misdemeanor domestic violence and not ever go to jail. But if the push to make it a felony goes through, a judge would give the person convicted a mandatory prison term. Unfortunately, we think this bill is misguided. The Ohio Public Defender's Office opposes the bill, saying adequate laws already exist and that this proposal would waste taxpayer dollars by putting more people in prison than necessary. We think that money would be better spent on victim services and going straight to the victims of domestic violence. This is incredibly serious. Supporters argue strangulation is so serious it needs a clear legal definition. Is it an assault? Is it attempted murder? Like I think there's all these different things that people could label it as. But if we had a law that said when this happens, this is the outcome, it makes it much more cleaner and more efficient. Raymond Roberts did go to prison. He's serving 11 years for attempted murder for cutting his wife's throat. But had he stopped after strangling her into unconsciousness, he might still be free today. 
I feel like strangulation, there'd be a lot less of it if there was more of a consequence. The bill to make strangulation a felony is pending before the Ohio Senate Judiciary Committee. They held a second hearing just last month. I'll keep following its progress and let you know if it passes or fails. And live right now on our new and easier to use WHIO streaming app, you can watch my full interview with Jessica Roberts, a story she says she wants you to hear. That is a free download on your Roku, Amazon Fire and Apple TV devices.